Welcome to Performer Stuff Pro Series, a collaborative forum where working professionals can share together their knowledge, experiences, hopefully a little wisdom, but most importantly, their collective passion for live entertainment. I'm Mark Pawsey, and today I have a face-to-face -face conversation with leading musical theatre actress, Annaline Beachy, who has graced the West End stage as Christine in Phantom, Cosette in Les Miserables, Glinda in Wicked, and most recently as Anna in The King and I. Annaline, welcome. Hi. <laughs> so let's start very quickly by saying, why did you become a professional actor? For me, I didn't have a choice. It was just all I wanted to do. I remember we used to watch those matinee movie musicals on the Saturday afternoons, they would be on television. As a child, I'd sit and watch them. And if we got all of our jobs done in the morning, we could sit down and watch one of these movie musicals, you know, as a family. And I remember watching Catherine Graceman in Showboat and Shirley Jones in Oklahoma and Carousel and just being blown away. You are transported into this wonderful place and time and, you know, the emotion through singing and how that music makes you feel. It just, I didn't ever want to do anything else. It was just in me. It was just the only thing I, I could do. It still is really the only thing I can do. But it was just something that I had to do. Annaline, what qualities do you think a professional actor needs? Uh, I think one of the most important things is the ability to listen and to observe. I think that's something I have learned over the years is the most valuable tool that I think I have in my, in my little toolbox because you are observing different people and their physicalities, their reactions to things, their emotional reactions in so many different circumstances, uh, whether it be sitting in a waiting room and looking at somebody coming in. And I find myself often in those situations when you are on a train or I don't have my book or my phone with me, I'll just look at people and watch them and try and work out what's going on. You know, where are they coming from? What are they doing? Um, and I, I think that's something that I have learned is one of the most important things that you can have is the ability to watch, listen, and never stop learning. Great answer. How is it easy, is it, though, to tap into those emotions or feelings? That must take a lot of practice. It's a lot easier now, actually. Uh, having had children and gone through just every emotion with them, it, and I think with that extreme tiredness as, as a, a par parent in those first six months when you're just so exhausted you can barely even remember your own name your your emotions are heightened you know you will cry at the tiniest thing and you will laugh at something so so small but I think I, I now find I remember people saying to me when I was young they were saying you know you're too inexperienced you can't play that part you you you, you haven't lived enough of a life and I was you know in my young you know, bolshy fashion thinking, yes, I can, that's, I'm an actress, that's what I'm supposed to be able to do. Um, but now I see it very differently. I can see my ability, my walls, I think, have come down. You know, I think I was quite guarded earlier on. But now as a parent, I think um, I'm not afraid of that emotion and I'm not, I'm not afraid to let it out because I understand it. I can click very quickly into how they make me feel when I'm angry or sad or tired or amused. That's, it's a lot easier, I think, now for me. It's all those life skills we learn and earn that set us up for roles because it's, each role is about the layers that you peel back and, and show. And unless you know what those layers are, it, it's, it's sort of impossible, I think. Or, or yeah. Harder, not impossible. Yeah, and I, I think that's possibly, you know, when I was younger, I think I was afraid of those layers. Um, I, I remember, you know, there's, there's all these moments in your career where you, I'm on stage and I had that sort of light bulb moment. I remember being in Phantom of the Opera and it being in that, the moment before Wishing You Were Somehow Here Again starts. So the previous scene is just, dis, you know, just dispersing. Everybody's moving away. And Christine has a moment of sort of silent reverie as she walks up to the gates. And I just remember suddenly realising, I was 19, suddenly realising it's not about pretending to be these people. It's about tapping into that part of you in this situation and how 
you as Annaline and me as Annaline would react to this situation because that's what makes it real as opposed to pretending to play Christine Frightened. It's, it's me thinking about myself in this situation with this kind of a history and background and how I would react in that situation, which I think makes it real rather than pretense. And even though that sounds like, well, is that really acting? It seems to work with the parts I've played because I think they are, I can see myself in so many, so many different versions of myself in the characters that I've played. I can see me. Uh, and maybe that's just the way I make them work. I don't know, really. How do you cope with disappointment when you don't get a role? Uh, for me, I, I mourn the loss of it. So I allow myself a day or two because, you know, I, I always imagine myself when I'm thinking about auditioning for a show and for a part, I imagine myself on stage in a costume of my imagining, <laughs> performing the whole thing, telling the whole story, because then I feel that I'm ready to walk into the audition room and, and present certainly my idea of the full package of what I could offer. So to then switch that off completely and go, right, that's gone. I have to allow myself a couple of days of, you know, just bringing it up randomly and going, oh, I can't believe I didn't get that. I, I had this. <laughs> and then I'll just let it go. And then it, it, it's a couple of days of mourning. But I tend to find that uh, it, it, always, it always happens for the right reason, you know, and I, I keep saying to myself, there's a reason, there's a reason, you know, that maybe that, and then I come up with reasons until I know what the reason is. <laughs> Well, you know, it wouldn't have fitted in. Uh, I wouldn't have looked good in that outfit or so-and-so is a leading man and he's far too tall for me. So un until I know what the real reason is, I'll come up with reasons that I can make up that make me feel better. Um, and, you know, most of the time I go and see the thing and, and I can completely understand why they went with that person and, and, they were, and they're brilliant, you know, so you go, nah. okay. <laughs> Tell me more about the audition process because it sounds to me that um, it's much more thorough as an investment from you as an actor than maybe people think. So tell me about your process for auditioning. My, my process is quite simple. Um, I, I generally don't learn the material. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but I try to learn it, but it doesn't tend to go in. Um, and it's because I've got too many ideas or there are too many unknowns. And then what will happen is I will go in with the material normally with the material and, uh, and get an idea of what they're thinking. And then it will just tend to go in because I, I, need, I need some kind of input. Because I, I find that if I go in and I've, I've learned the script, I have made, I've all formed too many opinions already as to what I think the part and what the scene and the whole picture of the show sh should be. So I find it hard then to be open in an audition situation with either the reader or the director if I've already closed off what my 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 image of the thing to be so it's a very you know, it's broad brush strokes of what I believe the part to be generally and then after the second and third audition when I have my idea I will then think about everything I think about as I say the clothes I think about my hair I think about how I walk into that room because most of the time they know the second you walk in the room if you're the right person or not before you even open your mouth they kind of go hmm Mm, yeah no mm, you know and you know you kind of get a pretty good idea of you know whether their shoulders get back and they sit back in their seat or whether they just go oh it's another one we need to strike off <laughs> you know and I think I suppose what's most important is that you know they just want to know it, they want to know if if your voice matches your look they want to know if your voice matches their show um so they don't want to know they don't need to hear you singing Defying gravity, <laughs> you know, they don't need that unless it is actually wicked that you're auditioning for. Um, but they will give you the music that from their show. So you just need to go in there and be confident in what you're doing, singing something that is going to show off the best of what you can you have. And you know, if they hear your voice and they go, okay, let's see if you can go a couple of notes higher, they'll do a scale with you. But don't go in there thinking I'm gonna I'm gonna work out a Christine E. You know, if you think, well, you know, my D was there. <laughs> you know, it's not worth the risk. If they want to hear it, they'll do scales with you. Do you suffer from nerves at all? Yes. Oh, I do. Yeah. I think they probably have gotten a little bit worse, but um, 
but equally I know my comfort zone now so I sort of have to just what, what I do is have a word with myself <laughs> imagine there's a little devil on my shoulder going oh you're not gonna be able to do this you know because that is it, that's exactly what goes on in my head and it happens on stage sometimes as well or before I'm going when I'm in the wing you know I have to shut that voice down and go right enough because I've got this um and that's that's literally the best I can say I tend to find myself uh, if it's if it's a, a press night or a first preview or a big audition I'm doing later in the day I, I, I allow myself to get really nervous during the day and just with a, with the, with a view to sort of going well that's all my nerves used up <laughs> I'll still be nervous later but I feel like that helps me just get nervous live through every scenario all go through all the things that might go wrong but the bottom line is, if you know what you're doing, you know your lines, you know where you're supposed to be, most of the time you'll be fine. You just have to, nerves are good to a certain extent, but you can't let them take over. You have to, you have to put them in a box and let them give you that excitement and that energy and that lift, but don't let them overtake you. And Aline, thank you for sharing a small part of yourself within our Performer Stuff Pro Series and for helping. <laughs> With entertainment alive, nourished, and full of hope. And for those watching this, please dream big. And while you're dreaming, look out for more Performer Stuff Pro Series coming your way real soon. Annaline, I love you. Thank you. And doodle pip, everyone. <laughs>